Hello YouTube, Justin here. In this video, we're gonna talk about daily higher lows and daily higher highs, because that's what's setting up on these daily charts. And I think that there is now potential for me to be wrong on my weekend analysis and for us to dramatically move higher. The bulls appear like they are back in control. And um, even as we look here in pre-market, we are advancing dramatically. So the headline that is driving us here, I believe, is that um, we saw the initial jobless claims coming in with a slight beat. We're not gonna look at that, not as important. What I think is actually driving us here is the news that there is a meeting happening between Russia and Ukraine. So if this is what's been driving the negative rhetoric and keeping us inside that deep fear territory, um, now we have the potential to snap out of out, snap back out of extreme fear and only go into fear. So uh, markets generally bottom when we are extremely fearful and we get a massive correction. Both of those have happened. And um, this is now turning into more than a dead cat bounce, at least on a daily time frame, because we are doing something here that I actually only noticed last night. Um, instead of looking at trend lines, we're going to look at something different today. And uh, if you're enjoying this video at any time, I would appreciate you clicking on the button to make the thumb turn blue and drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys are looking at today and whether or not you think what I'm presenting is accurate. So what I want to point out here are going to be uh, inside bar, sorry, uh, higher lows and higher highs. So. There's a pattern I've been noticing on ES and same thing on S&P for the last couple of sessions here. Low, let's actually delete everything and we'll come back and have a look at all this. So low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. So ever since we put in the bottom, um, this is now signaling that it might be a reversal because we're actually what? Well, we stopped going down, we're starting to go up. Also, we got a high, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high. So what does this, what does this basically tell us? We're going up. Um, we got higher highs and higher lows. They're not they're not huge higher lows. Um, what I was actually looking at uh, only into Friday was for a test at 4,400. We didn't just get a test. We blew through it. So looking here again for the last couple of sessions, the high here is 4,384.25. Here we got 4,385.5, roughly one point higher. Here we got 4,399, 4,399.25, 25 cents higher. And now we got a pretty nice uh, higher high here, 4,418. So um, what this basically tells me is that um, we have pressure building up. Um, pressure is building up and it's now getting released. We can also look down here and see that this does look like capitulation volume in hindsight, just like it did back here. So again, stop going, uh, stop going down, started going back up, and then we topped out. So where would that top out be on our new pattern? It'd be here at roughly 4,800. Um, again, somewhere between the 50 and 200 DMA here. So hopefully you understand what I've laid out here. And what we're going to look at now is actually going to be the SPY. Uh, where is my head and shoulders pattern for S&P? Ooh, maybe I deleted it. Um, anyways, um, I can probably redraw this really fast here. So what we're looking at here on the E-mini futures is going to be the same thing. So we got a head, sorry, a shoulder, head, and a shoulder. And then we have our green line right here, which was our support. So what this tells me is that we are now attempting a reversal inside of a bearish pattern. However, even on the weekly chart, we got a low, higher low, and a high, higher high. So um, I'm starting to see quite a bit of evidence that uh, I am probably wrong in what I'm seeing. Oh, actually, I think I know why this is actually doing this. Give me one second here. Uh, forgot I got two boards here, and I am probably on the wrong one. Yep, I am. There we go. All right, so let's bring this back. And now, here we go. Now I got it. Sorry about that. I'm um, looking at SPY in the one-week chart. So again, what I was looking for specifically was this relative low right here at about 454. Four. So we still have to make progress all the way up to here. But um, the reason why I want to point out S&P at the open here is because our 50 weekly moving average is going to be at 439.99. We're going to be gapping over this area. The high of the day from yesterday is 439.72. So at the open, if we backtest and fill the daily gap, that is our 50 weekly moving average backtest. And um, are we going to get more of the same from Jerome today? I have every reason to think we will. So what does that mean? If we backtest 44, sorry, 440 and we advance, that is a bull signal. That is your early evidence that we are back above the 50 moving average and we're looking for movement up towards minimum, I would say, Probably the, probably the 200 day moving average, um, if not getting back up to the 454 area. So as of right now, we got 445 as the 200 daily moving average. And that is the area that I will be watching for. It's also important to note that as we looked at uh, yesterday, the monthly chart for the S&P right now signifies that, again, 
And we were going down and opening and being above 438, 439 is a down, downtrend break. We got a inside bar on the monthly with an established low, which is right on the green line, which in my opinion is extremely bullish. So um, again, contradicting information, but um, there was so many asks that were up at roughly 440 that they just blew through it. And again, this is relief on what's happening in Europe. So if this is going to be true, I would want to see, excuse me, um, coffee burp. Um, I'd want to see the same thing as what I mentioned before. So let's look over here at what drives the S&P and what has been a piece of garbage lately, the QQQ. So here on the daily chart, what do we have? Well, we have a massive um, triangle or pennant that is pointing down. And what did we do? We stopped going down. So we don't have the same pattern here on QQQ as we do on SPY with higher lows and sorry, higher highs and higher lows every day. But uh, collectively looking at the weekly candle, it's pretty nice. We got the higher high and the higher low. Uh, we're breaking the pattern. And uh, in my opinion, um, if we're going to start leading, we want to see that same thing happening here on the weekly chart that we noticed uh, noted before. So again, we're going down on the weekly, getting back above 350, which we are in pre-market here at 350.2 is a break. And um, if we look at some of the big companies, again, like Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, all those companies are looking a lot better now. Um, Apple is now actually back above um, its important level at roughly 166. It's ready to lead. It's got a higher low and a higher high. Let's look at Bill Microsoft. Yep, pushing up the 50, breaking the downtrend, higher high, higher low. Check. Amazon. Uh, looks like a little bit weak, but higher high, higher low but it's red. So Amazon's not been strong, but it's showing potential that if it wants to start leading, it has to start getting back above 3330, 3340, 3140, sorry. And then we got Goog. Uh, Goog, higher high, higher low over the 50. Ugh, this is looking a lot better than it did even just yesterday. Looking at Facebook, what do we got? Got a higher high and a higher low right on the green line. Hmm, doesn't look so terrible to me. Then looking at Tesla, what do we got here? Higher high, higher low, push off the 50. Isn't that bullish? So <clears throat> what I want to leave you with is this. Let me actually not light that gun and kill my eyeballs. Um, the important thing for us to remember going into the rest of the day here is that we've had the earnings cycle. We've had World War III fears. We've now had um, the potential for seven, eight rate hikes this year. Where are we? Higher highs, higher lows. What does that tell you? I think we're at peak fear. I think we're at peak hawkishness. And as we mentioned on the weekend deep dive, if... We're no longer getting negative reactions to negative news. What can happen when we get good news? What happened this morning? We blew through a key resistance area we've not been able to touch for the last week. We destroyed it at the open here. So what this tells you is that if we pumped up 2% on Powell yesterday and the bears were still fighting it, if the bears get punched in the balls today, who's likely going to advance the chart? The bulls. And 2% higher from 440 is where? It's a lot higher. It's roughly 448. So there's potential for us to go dramatically higher. And if you are still bearish, please just know that you need to know the level that you were wrong for your risk reward. And if you're bullish, if that 50 weekly moving average holds on a closing basis, which means Friday, not today, tomorrow at 4 p.m. it has to hold. So if you're getting aggressive buying now, please just make sure you need to know that the candle has to close above 440 by Friday. And if everything goes according to plan, there is a lot of potential that we could snap back right here. The FOMC happens on the 18th, and we have the CPI number next week. But um, in this market, in this environment, I think that dips might be for buying now. They might not, uh, rips might not be for selling, dips are for buying. So um, I think that uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, Mason, do you want to come on for a second? We can just talk about this. And uh, just curious on your opinion about what I presented and if you see anything different out there. You're muted, by the way. Oh, my bad. Um, good morning, Justin. Good morning, everybody. And yeah, I'm kind of seeing, um, kind of like you mentioned, peak fear. I mean, we've had a lot of bad news. Um, there's two countries that are having a terrible conflict that are going on. Um, we're still not going much lower. Um, we got the rate stuff out of the way. It's, it's known. It's arguably been priced in. Um, I do think we're headed for some relief. Um, it doesn't mean we're you just buy whatever you want. You still need to be um, diligent. But yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think it's the time to at least buy a little bit. Um, yeah, this is my personal opinion, though. All right. Well, um, it's not that complicated. So if we're setting higher highs and higher lows, as long as the pattern holds, what does that mean? We're going up. Um, if you don't understand technical analysis, if we're going higher, it means we're going up. It means the bulls are in control. 
-hmm. And um, every major chart that I would look at to know who the leaders are, they all look ready for blast off, every single one. And um, if you listen to what Jerome Powell said yesterday, I want to finish on this point. Um, I think that I heard Jerome Powell tell us that there is now a third mandate. Um, the two official mandates are price stability and uh, full employment, meaning inflation and jobs. I heard him basically say that the third mandate is now stock market stability. And the reason why I say that is because he knows he went radio silent for about two weeks. He knows the market was craving to know what Jerome thinks. They didn't get it. Who they get? Fucking James Bullard, right? Yappity, yap, yap, yap. And um, what he said is that the market is priced in what we want. What that means is that the yield curve, the twos, the tens, the twenties, whatever, the fives, they all they all took what the data told us. They forecasted and baked in the rate, hike, rate hikes and did what? Most of the job for the Fed. They told the Fed, you are behind. We're going to reprice for you. Boom. It's done. There's nothing else for us to have to worry about. We even hear the boogeyman about the uh, 50 basis point hike at potentially multiple meetings, but it's not going to be in March. So what does that mean? Until we get evidence that we are actually going lower with lower highs and lower lows, we've been going down for a while, a couple of months. So we're due for some relief. And I think we're going to get that relief today and potentially into next week. If these talks between Russia and Ukraine go positively, that could give us enough extra lift to use the 50 weekly as a back test for next week and for us to continue to move higher. With that said, I wish you all the best of luck. And there'll be a video that'll queue up at the end of the stream here. If you want to watch the weekend deep dive. Thank you, Mason. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.